Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. First of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For all the blessings that we have Including the blessings that we have today Alhamdulillah, today is a bright day It's a nice day And this is Sunday, Alhamdulillah And we are here By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We are in this nice place In, in our brother's Abu house And Mbak Budi house And Alhamdulillah and Insha'Allah We will learn about religions today And just, you know, anybody you know, uh, knows that Islam is the most logical religions. So when we talk about Islam, when we learn about Islam, most of the learning, the knowledge that we learn can be really, you can feel it in your heart, you can also sense it with our logic. Even in the Islam, in Islamic religion, all the Sharia, all the orders by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it should be done with the belief and also with the logical sense. This is the reason why in Islam, crazy people, they don't have to pray <laughs> because they are crazy. <laughs> because everything that we do, it has to be logical in Islam. So this is the religions that we have. And inshallah, before we start, we will read the dua. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the ability, the easiness to understand their religion. Allahumma faqihna fitin. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, give us understanding of religion. Wa alimna at And the knowledge to analyze the Quran and also the hadith. And this is Insha'Allah related with our logic also Not only belief, but we have belief and logic This is Islamic religion, this is Islam So Insha'Allah for today uh, The host asking us to talk To discuss about the Yawmiddi Yawmul Qiyam The day, the last day and also the, the hereafter and this is part of our belief and again this is a logical belief believe me when we learn about this yaumuddin about this kriyama about the hereafter everything even though we don't really see it right now it is follow the logical things sense so we can when inshallah we'll see that one inshallah so mabudi read about surah al qiyama okay this is so Al Qiyamah or the last day it has many names in the Quran, including Al Qiyamah, Al Zalzala, Al Qari'ah. Uh, there are many names. As Sa'ah, that means all the last day. So inshallah we'll talk about this. And this is again part of the articles of faith. So when in Madina, you know, so Angel Jibril actually came to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the form of human being. Everybody actually see it. Okay, that's actually the blessing of the companions. Sometimes they are able to see the angel in kind of form. And in this case, the angel came in the form of human being and came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the hadith, and again in the Islam. 
we always have preferences. The first reference will be the Quran. The second reference will be the Hadith. That's the main references in in Islam. So in the Hadith, uh, it's called the Hadith Jibril. So this angel Jibril came to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asking about religion. And this is the way. This is the way the angel Jibril and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teach us about our religion. So angel Jibril asked, Pak Akbirni Anil Iman. Tell us or tell me eh, what is Iman, what is faith, what is belief. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he answered, Antuk mina billah. First, you believe in Allah. Only one God. What it to be? What it which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal malaikatihi and you believe in his angels. So Allah created so many angels. At least ten of them that you know we learn in our religion. And then wal wal kitabi wa kutubihi, which is believe in his books. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the books and we believe in four of them that has been sent to the Prophet. The first one is Torah, which is sent to Prophet Moses. So we believe in Torah. Because if you don't believe in Torah, we are not Muslim. So, you know, that's part of our belief. Believe in Kitab, the Holy Kitab. The second Kitab is Az Zabur, which is sent to, which was sent to Prophet Daud or King David. And the next one is Gospel or in Arabic it's called Injil. It was sent to our Prophet Isa or Jesus, to speak upon him. And the last one is Al Quran. It is what it was sent to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is part of our belief. We believe in books of Allah. Walusuli, and we believe in the prophets of Allah. There are many prophets, thousands of prophets that are being sent to mankind in order to remind them about the religion, about God, yeah, how to worship, and etc. So many of them. And the last one is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There will be no other prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the next one, we believe in Yaumil Akhir, which is the hereafter. The hereafter, we believe that there will be life after death. On that hereafter, we will be responsible for whatever we do. We have done in this dunya. And the last one, Antuk Mina Bil Qadri. We believe in Qadar. Qadar means predestiny. So everything actually has been prescribed, has been written by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Khairihi wa sharihi. Whether it is good or bad, everything has been prescribed, has been written by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So in Islam, it's actually there is no accident. Okay, there is no accident because everything actually prescribed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So from these six articles, yeah, we have one of them, which is believe in Yaumul Akhir. This is the one that we will talk insha Allah today. We will discuss today. Believe in the hereafter. The hereafter, we don't see it. Eh? We don't see it, but inshallah, we will there. Will we be there? And we will see it. Okay, that's the reason why in Islam, eh, in Surah Al Baqarah, Alif Lamin, Dalik Al Kitab Ula Roy Bafi, Udal Bil Mutaqin, Al Ladi Nayuk Minu Nabil Ghaibi. The first things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned about the one that is Mutaqin, the one that fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Is belief in the unseen, al ghaib unseen. There are so many unseen, and in Islam we believe that this unseen we will see it later. Just like in this dunya, yeah, 
There are many things that used to be unseen, but with the knowledge now we able to see it, even though we have to use equipment. Like viruses, for example, you know, we, we, we scare of COVID-19. What is that? We cannot see that, but they are around us. They're causing disease. Yeah? So there are many things that are actually unseen, but in within the period of time, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal them to us. The same thing with Allah, the same thing with the hereafter, the all unseen, but we will be there. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. This is only for the believer. That's the one in Surah al Qiyamah. Yeah, it's mentioned that we will, inshallah, meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though right now, we don't see Allah. Okay, so that's the belief in Islam. Now, when we talk about the Yawmul Akhir, the last day, and also the hereafter, okay, we also should talk about the, the last day, the, the Qiyamah. Because the Qiyama is actually the one that separates us from the hereafter. Okay, the one that separates us from the hereafter. So if we try, let's say, connect our life, every man, eh, every man, you know, they have to, uh, will kind of pass five periods of time. Eh? Except maybe uh, Prophet Adam and his wife, uh, Eve. Okay? But everyone will go to these five different periods of time. The first one uh, is called the, what we call the Alam Ruh, the spiritual life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually already created all the Ruh of mankind. All the spirits of the mankind. And after that, what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us on the next life. It's called the Alam Rahim, which is the place when we are in our mother womb. Such Alam Rahim. On that day, on that time, on that period, you know, when we are in our mother womb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will combine the physical body which is you know it is created in our mother moon yeah prophet muhammad said that uh, 120 days about 120 days <coughs> angel will come to bring our ruh and then combine it with the with the body eh? with the body then we live in our mother womb it's called the alam rahim and then after that, when we born, we are in this dunya. We call the alam dunya. And for temporary, we're gonna live there. Eh? And then after that, when we pass away, we will go to the alam kubur or alam barzah. Alam barzah is the place that kind of divide the dunya and the akhirah. And then after that, you know, we're gonna be alam akhirah. But when we enter alam akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the moment is called the last day, the qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order his angel, called the Raphael or Israfil, to blow the first, what do you call it? The trumpet. trumpet, the first trumpet. And all this universe will be collapsed. Destroy and kuluman alaiha fun. Everything will die except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then on the second blow of the trumpet, everything will be resurrected. Okay. Now we are going to that. We are going to Qiyamah. Because when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned about the last day, the hour, there are some companions that asking, that ask Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when will be the last day? Okay, don't just talk. We want to know when it's gonna be. Okay? When is the last day gonna be? And Prophet Muhammad said, nobody knows. Nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when Prophet uh, when the angel Jibril, which is the archangel, you know we, we can we can say that angel Jibril is the general angel, eh? when he came to Prophet Muhammad, 
and asking mata sah when is the last day when 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 will be the hour and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the one that being asked and the one that asking don't know when will be it means that even the angels they don't know when is the last day going to be even the angel that you know uh, blow the trumpet Israfil or Raphael the trumpet's already in his mouth that's that's according to the hadith already but he just waiting when it's going to be when it's going to be he doesn't know but he you know all angel is very obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they, they just follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, order the angel of Raphael to be ready blow the trumpet he just doing that waiting for when is going to be the moment because he that he doesn't know either so nobody know except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's going to be uh, but Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says and this is one clue maybe if we, if we want to be ready <laughs> to the, the last day the, the hour Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi say the hour the qiyamah will not come except in or on Friday so he give the clue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the clue to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi the hours will come on Friday when? I don't know we don't know, nobody knows this Friday this is the reason why very important for us on Friday we always be ready uh, that's the reason <laughs> be ready uh, nobody know maybe next Friday okay uh, that's the reason why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam cannot give us suggestion try to read surah al kahfi on Friday especially if you memorize the 10 ayat of surah al kahfi it will inshallah protect us from that day and also protect us from the dajjal the Dajjal and who is Dajjal we're gonna talk about that okay who is Dajjal so that's the one clue that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said about Friday Friday is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam Friday is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Adam in the paradise Friday is when yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually uh, what do you call it push or exile Adam from the paradise too okay? and then Friday is going to be the time when the Sa'ah, the Qiyamah will come so that's the, some of the, you know, uh, that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned about uh, uh, Friday uh, what, what will happen or what happened in or on Friday now, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that nobody knows when is the uh, the Qiyamah will be the last day going to be then they ask the angel ask at least uh, the, the sign at least you can give us the sign and from Muhammad Wasallam mentions many signs so from this many signs that actually you can divide it into uh, the what is it called the minor signs uh, the minor sign and the major signs. The minor sign, some of them already gone, some is now happening, some is not happening yet. Eh? Uh, for example, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sign say that uh, on the close to the last day there will be group of people that used to be poor, they used to be you know barefoot, uh, they used to be shepherd, but now they are very rich and they build, they compete in building tallest building in the world and we know, you know, from this hadith that he mentioned about the group of people that used to be in, live in uh, Arabian Peninsula that used to be, you know, Badui people now they have become actually very uh, richest kind of kingdom in the world and which is in the eastern part of Saudi Arabia like Qatar, Dubai, etc. That's actually, they used to be people that bear food. They used to be Badu, okay? including the king of uh, Saudi Arabia. It's not from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam progeny, but it's from group of uh, Badu people. Okay? So they know the, 
the one that is very very rich and then we know what happened there you know building that's just example but i will not talk about the minor sign okay we're gonna talk about the major sign because this is the the one that you know right now is is kind of really important for us to know what happening in this world is actually will be related to these major signs of and kiamah of the last day so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say there are 10 major signs of yaumul kiamah there are major signs 10 major signs of the last day okay so i'm gonna read based on the sequence and yeah, because when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about this 10 sign he didn't really mention in sequence but on other hadith he mentioned about what happened during this first sign the you know the sign and etc so according to the hadith and then we put that in the sequence okay the first sign the first major sign of yaumul qiyamah or the last day is dajjal anybody know what is dajjal who is dajjal dajjal is the great lions he is the great lions okay uh, even in other religions they also believe in this believe in dajjal yeah? they, they, you know they call this as antichrist antichrist or uh, anti messiah okay. messiah is is a dajjal which is the actually a person still in progeny of Prophet Adam alaihi salam that become so good in his bad <laughs> he's so good in doing bad even you know he can trick so many people uh, he can trick so many people you know, on the right hand for example you know it looks like he's bringing paradise water is actually hell or fire on the left one you know he bringing fire but actually the paradise something like that so he can trick many people and some when, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi mentioned about Dajjal some people say that ah, maybe I can fight Dajjal he said no Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said nobody will be able to fight Dajjal even though maybe you have very good knowledge in Islam very good, you know, good knowledge but nobody will be able to fight Dajjal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already predestined that Dajjal will be defeated by Isa alayhi salam Prophet Jesus peace be upon him so he will be killed by Prophet Jesus peace be upon him in the before the last day before the uh, Yawmul Qiyam okay? so that's the first sign which is the Dajjal and then uh, before Dajjal there is actually another uh, mankind or human being that will kind of lead Muslim but it is not part of the major sign it's a minor sign which is uh, many us believe Al-Mahdi you know, Al-Mahdi, Imam Mahdi so it will come uh, actually before Dajjal so the Imam Mahdi you know it will be leading Muslim because at that time Muslim is actually in a very bad shape they are being killed, being defeated by the enemy of what we call is the enemy of Muslim. Just like nowadays, there are so many places in Islamic country, for example, there are many Muslim, you know, being kind of tortured and etc. That's actually going to be worse. It's going to be worse, close to the the last day, close to the Yawmul Qiyamah. Therefore, many Muslims looking for the leader. Who gonna be the leader? Gonna be, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala actually appointed Al Mahdi. That's the name. The name is actually his name is actually Muhammad bin Abdullah. This Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say Al Mahdi will be from my progeny, and his name is just like my name. So he's actually the progeny of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the name of Muhammad bin Abdullah but people call Mahdi or Imam Mahdi or Al-Mahdi that's the, the name and he will be you know uh, 
And the Muslim will be doing bay'ah. What is bay'ah called? The, the, the pledge. Pledge. Okay, pledge. Okay. Muslim will pledge to him to be the leader in in front of Mac, in front of Kaaba, in Makkah. So Imam Mahdi will be the leader of Muslim, and he will let the Muslim army to fight this enemy of Islam. But still, they unable to defeat this army, the enemy of Islam. They actually have to, you know, they they they, they have to go. They force this Muslim to Syria. So the Muslim army will go to Syria and they will be in a place in a mosque it's called the White Minaret Mosque if you google them the mosque is actually there right now remember this is this is the hadith that Prophet Muhammad said that Muslim will be go to the mosque in Damascus and at that time Damascus is not even Muslim place yet there, there was no mosque when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned about that you can follow this right so he this is a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi so that Muslim will go to the Damascus uh, and the, in the, the end of the last day to a masjid called the White Manares and if we go Google right now you will find that masjid actually so that masjid is uh, now is actually there yeah, I, don't, I don't know when it is built but it is there when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this that area is not even Muslim place yet and then they will stay there and the enemy of uh, Islam now they are being led by Dajjal now Dajjal come to them and led this the enemy of Islam to try to finish Muslim on that that hiding or you know have a, a fortress on that masjid okay. And during the uh, Fajr time, so this is this is the the what, what do you call it the blessing of Islam actually. In Islam, everything is actually mentioned clearly for us. It is mentioned with detail, with detail. So only Islam actually that have that kind of detail. Almost every our action that we do, it's detail in Islam, right? When you go for the, for example, to the bathroom, this is what you have to do. When we go to that, that, and when we do this, everything is detailed because it's really, you know, it's a blessing for us. So including the story about the the hereafter and also about the young Qiyam, it's very detailed. Now and during the Fajr time, what happened? They ready to perform the Fajr prayer, okay? and then the Muadin already called the uh, Ikama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad dan selain in Kuninsli And they already put, of course, Al-Mahdi for being the Imam, for the Fajr prayer And during that time, Prophet Muhammad SAW said that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, will be sent down to that masjid now this is the, the one of the belief in Islam that we believe Prophet Jesus his name was not or is not died is not sacrificed is not uh, what do you call it the, put in the cross crucified crucified it's not crucified this is the belief of Islam and we believe that Prophet Jesus his name is actually lived up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the heaven Okay, so that's the reason why this is another maybe logical explanation why Prophet Jesus that returned to this dunya, not Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi already passed away, and and in Islamic belief we know that uh, someone that already passed away, yeah, logically will not come back to the dunya. Okay, logically, even though Allah maybe can can do that, but in logical way. It will not go back to dunia because he already passed away. It is the reason why Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, actually that will return to this dunia. That's logical, at least logical explanation why Prophet Jesus came. Yeah, even though that's actually already presented by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, already mentioned in the Quran, 
that Dr. Jesus will come back. Even in the other religion, they also believe the return of Jesus, right? But we have that belief over here. And that belief follow this kind of a logical explanation. And then, uh, Prophet Jesus will be with the Muslims in the masjid. And Al-Mahdi, because no, so we, we actually know the Muslim, just like we know right now, the Muslim in the last day also, before the last day, also know what will be happen. And they know the one that coming down is Prophet Jesus, because they already had that. Just like us, we have the, the hadith that mentioned it. And then, you know, Imam Mahdi, Al-Mahdi, asked Prophet Jesus to be the Imam, because he's prophet, yeah, he's prophet, you know. And Imam Mahdi is the follower of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what Prophet Jesus said, you are already called as an Imam, now you are the Imam. And it is also mentioned that, actually, logically, that Jesus, peace be upon him, also approve or follow the Islamic belief. Is in the follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this case, yeah, during that prayer, he is following the Imam Al-Mahdi, and he is doing the same type of prayers that we perform. That's, you know, uh, what happened. Then what next? Okay, after, after prayer, then Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, said that, open the gate. I will fight that job. Because he know, he will the one that defeat. And that you also know, the one that will defeat him eh, will be only Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. So when they open the gate, and that you see, or you know, will see, because it's not happening yet, right? So this is the story that happening, I don't know when, but it will happen. So when that you see Prophet Jesus, peace upon him, he kind of stressed, eh? and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put fear in him, and he is so sweating, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if he does, he does not run from that place, he will be melting just like a salt melting in the, in the water. That's what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And he ran away, he ran away, eh? and then Prophet Jesus you know, follow him, uh, what do you call it, chase him, uh, until, until he reached Jerusalem, it's not that far away, right? At least from, you know, Damascus, that masjid in Damascus, you know, and then run to Jerusalem. Okay, so Jerusalem in that. Now, that's the reason why the Jerusalem is actually the, the main, what you call it? The main place that what happened in, in, in the last day. That's the reason why maybe sometimes we, we can also confuse. How come you now people of Israel, for example, the one that is very they, they are just few number, right? The few number. They have been there uh, for a long time in this. Uh, even during some time, some kingdom you know pushed them away from Jerusalem. They they spread all over the world, right? And then they come back. And then, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this is going to be the main place? Why not China, for example? Now China, you know, China have millions of people, but why not that area? Why? Why this area? Now, we see that why this area is never, we can say, is never in peace. You see that one? It's, at least, uh, if we, you know, learn about the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we know that that area has never been in peace for, maybe forever. <laughs> Until then, until the last day, until now, yeah, until now, it's occupied by uh, Israel. Until now, now, when that jail, okay, run and then enter Jerusalem in one gate, is called the gate of Hood. And again, you can actually right now we have computer, we have uh, internet, we can Google that Babul Hood. Okay, Prophet Muhammad SAW said. There will be a gate called the Babul Hood. Yeah, this is the place when uh, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, killed that child. And again, if you Google that, there will be a, 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 a village with a gate. It's actually Babul Hood. So at that time, that place is not there yet. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it, 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 we can follow them, right? So when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about this hadith, 
that place is not even there yet. The Jerusalem is still very empty place, and you know, it's not that like now have a many so many gates. So Prophet Muhammad SAW said that Dajjal will be killed on that Babul hood. And, and then what happened when Dajjal ran away, when Dajjal killed the follower, mostly Prophet Muhammad SAW is going to be at least 70,000 uh, Jewish people will be the follower of Dajjal. And they will be scattered away. And that's the time when Muslims actually defeated the, the Jews. And even Prophet Muhammad SAW, the, the rock, and the the trees will tell the Muslim that there is behind me there is a there is a, a Jews people so, and etc. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly mentioned only one tree that will not doing that. It's called the Garpas Garpas tree. And I don't know what happened. If you Google also, many people they say that in Israel they they plant in that tree in, in case they actually believe that they actually believe also. The, the process of what will be happening because they can read the hadith too, right? They can read, they, they believe that I do. But we we believe and we know and we follow that, uh, uh, that, that story. And then what happened after that? And this is the reason why when people say Jesus, will Jesus will be the savior of people? Yes, in Islam we believe that. But the way Jesus saved people is from the bad things, which is from the Dajjal and his follower, not by really, you know, uh, sacrifice himself to to make other people's sins gone away. Because in Islam, they, logically, this is a lot when we talk about logic also, everybody is responsible for their own action, right? Your father will not sacrifice, for example, kill himself, say that I will, I will kill myself, then your, your sin will be forgiven. That's, that's, that's not really logical, because if you are bad, that's you that is bad. Eh? That's, that's the reason why, you know, in Islam we believe that every action will be judged. Will be judged. If we believe in the judgment day, then we have to believe that nobody will be able to remove our sins with maybe with the sacrifice. If we believe that, that's logically. If you, if for example, for example, get okay, the easy way. If you believe in the day of judgment, but also you believe that someone actually already forgive your sin, why? Why there is there will be day of judgment? Why? Because. You sin already forgiven, you sin already gone. Why you still believe in the day of judgment? What is the day of judgment for in the hereafter? If you believe that your sin already forgiven. In, in logic, in logic. This is the reason why in Islam is very logic. There will be day of judgment because what? Because we have to responsible for our own sin. And it's gonna be judged on that day. Eh? If our, for example, if this is if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu already forgive us all our sin, we don't have to worry about the hereafter. You right? Can, can you, you know, if, if we already uh, forgiven no sins at all, we don't have to worry about hereafter because we already forgiven. We don't have sins. Eh? But some people they believe in this that they they they. Sin has been forgiven, but still they still worry about the day of judgment. That's not that's not straight, you know, logic over there. This is just example what you know, what, you know the, the logic of Islam right, about this. Okay, the same thing like for example in some religion they believe that baby carries sin, which is in logical yeah, in science or sand, it doesn't make sense. Because baby, they don't do anything. I mean, how can they have sins already? That's in Islam, we don't believe that. In Islam, we don't believe that baby carry the sins of their father or the sin of maybe Prophet Adam. No, baby, Prophet Muhammad SAW say, baby born as a pure, pure. They don't carry any sin. It is the reason why in Islam, we believe that Every baby kid that is not mature yet, if they pass away, 
they will be in paradise. That's that's logical, right? Why they don't have sin? They don't have sin. Baby pass away, they will be in paradise. That's what that's in in Islamic belief. Okay. Now we go back to the <laughs> to the uh, sign. Okay. So the first sign is the Dajjal, and again Dajjal. Uh, the second sign is the return of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And we already talked about that, right? Jesus will actually save mankind from the bad actions of Dajjal and his followers. So people know safe. Yeah? People safe by Jesus, peace be upon him. Now Jesus has become the leader of the Muslim. Eh? Leader of the Muslim because now he you know become the leader. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Prophet Muhammad SAW said, will make the 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 two groups of people, this is still the progeny of Prophet Adam, that is really really bad, then they are in the great of number. The group of people called the yeah, Jews and Mahjus. Or in uh, Western uh, term is called a Gog and Magog. So they believe also Gog and Magog. We believe Yajus and Mahjus will also come after Jesus peace be upon him. And Jesus peace be upon him with his follower, which is Muslim, so it's gonna all gonna be called a Muslim, will not be able to defeat this two very strong people, yeah, Jews and Mahjus. They are in great number. Prophet Muhammad SAW said when they pass the, the the river and also the lake, they will drink that and the, the water is almost gone. Because so many of them. So many of them. And then Jesus peace be upon them will take a Muslim his follower to the mountain. Okay, to the mountain, to the hill. And then asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defeat these people because he cannot do it. So strong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending what? Sending disease, sending the microbes. Eh? Like it's a contagious disease. It just seems like that. And then they all die actually because of the disease. Okay, so there are many movies that mention about you know the Z, you know, the the type of the disease, the, the contagious disease, you know. Contact just this is coming and then kill so many people. That's that's almost similar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent disease to these yeah, Jews and Mahjus. They all will gone because of so bad. The disease is so bad to them. Right? And then uh, because there are so many yeah, Jews and Mahjus on the ground, so it's gonna be smell really bad. And Prophet Jesus asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending the bird that Prophet Muhammad SAW said is going to be as big as the camel. Okay, yeah, maybe we, we, we cannot, but inshallah, we, you know, that's happening. And send the bird that will carry that, you know, carcasses from the ground. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the rain, heavy rain, to clean up the, 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 the land. And it's going to be clean and prophet Jesus peace be upon him and these people will going down yeah, to the ground and then they will leave and uh, will leave and Pro uh, prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that prophet Jesus will let these people about seven years okay and then on that time the place will be very very uh, prosper prosper even prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that at that time Someone that want to pay zakah, unable to pay it because nobody actually want to receive the zakah. They're all they're all wealthy people, and right? they're also prosper on that time. And Prophet Jesus lived for about seven years after that. And so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Prophet Jesus, when he uh, lifted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to uh, the heaven, is his, his age is about 33 years old. So he passed away maybe about 40 years old. The real pass away, you know, you know, after, you know, after that. So, 
After that, what happens? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say that uh, the people now is become divided. Some of them that still follow their religion yeah, will become Muslims, and other people actually separated become non-Muslim. So there's going to be two group peoples after that, Muslim and non and non-Muslim. And then the that's already three, right? Yeah, Jews. I mean, uh, Dajjal, Isa, Al Masih, Jesus. Yeah, Jews and non Jews. The next one, yeah, Prophet Muhammad SAW said that the sun will be rising from the west. The sun will be rising from the west. Is kind of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala abruptly changed the rotation of you know the sun or rotation of the earth. So the sun is shining from the west. Okay, setting up from the west. And Prophet Muhammad SAW say, when it is happening, when it is happening, there will be no more forgiven for sins. It means that people, non-Muslim, cannot come back into Muslim anymore. That's the point when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put on that time, which is when the sun setting up from the west, there will be no more changing, no more forgiven. Eh? And then after that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will send what we call the dabbah. It's gonna go to number five. Dabbah. What is dabbah? It's kind of wild beast that actually will put the sign marker mark on Muslim and non-Muslim. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will actually mark, give the mark on the face of non-Muslim and Muslim. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that. You know, even at that time when somebody say, "Where you buy this one?" Oh, from the you know uh, someone that have mark on his face like this. So the mark will telling you whether it is Muslim or not Muslim. It's clear mark that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give yeah, through this wild beast. It means that again, because of after the sun coming rise from the west, it's gonna be separate Muslim and then non-Muslim. And then what happened after that? And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala actually will send the breeze, the, the 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 wind, very shooting wind, and that wind is actually will take the soul of all Muslim. So all Muslim actually will be pass away at one time. It is the reason why in the Quran and also in the Hadith is mentioned that the kiamah, the last day will not be uh what is it? yeah will not be uh, feel or will not be witnessed by believer so, so the, the last day which is the kiyama only will be feel or witness or you know uh, happening to the very weak people very bad people because no more Muslim at that time. Okay, so the the the, the Yawmul Qiyamah will not be filled or will not be witnessed and also will not be uh, happenings to the Muslim because Muslim before that already passed away. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will start to make Prophet Muhammad SAW say it's going to be the sixth one. Uh, there will be collapse, collapse in three area. The first collapse will be on the east. Okay, each part of the world will be collapsing, so many people will will die, and then collapsing on the west, and finally collapsing in the Jazira to Arabia middle part, eh? and then the nine ones will be at Tuhan. At Tuhan means smoke, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will send smoke. Well, I don't know how big is the smoke, but Prophet Muhammad SAW well mentioned Tuhan is also another major sins of the major sign, I'm sorry, major signs of the uh, Qiyam. And the last one, Prophet Muhammad SAW said, there will be fire, eh? that big fire coming from Yaman, eh, which is on the south of Jazira, and then will push this, the rest of the people that still alive, which is all weak people, bad people, go to the Mashar. The Mashar will be on the north part in the Sham, Eh, area 
we call it Syam. Prophet Muhammad SAW say Syam at that time because that one, you know, is actually one country is called Syam, including Jordania, Syria, Lebanon. The all Syam, you know, it will be there. And then at that time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will ask Angel Israfil, Raphael to blow the trumpet and boom, all gone. So that's the major, the ten major sign. And right now, maybe we can see sign of Dajjal a little bit. Because what is the meaning of the Dajjal? The Dajjal means lying, lying. And we see a lot of lying in this world right now. It is part of the Dajjal. And that's finally there will be the big liar, which is the Dajjal itself. And so we, 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 we kind of having that problem right now. And Prophet Muhammad SAW said that there will be time when people that don't have the ability to go for something is actually put in chat to go for many people. And it's happening in many places in this world. Eh? That's because you are my friend. Okay, you will become minister of this. And he doesn't have any knowledge of that, what he's doing. That is happening in many places. Eh? Uh, I can mention in Indonesia, Indonesia, you know, when they choose the, uh, the minister, most of them is because this one used to be the supporter of the president. Okay, I get, you know, they, they get kind of giving the, what's it called? It? Yeah, giving you, okay, you become minister this, you minister this. Some of them may be good, but many of them mostly is just because the follower or supporter or maybe the family. And this is what happened right now, which is, and also we know that there are many things that is true now become, become false. And there are many false things that are happening, people believe it is true, right? So it's so conflicted, so inflicted the information right now. Something that is actually correct because people don't, you know, don't use it and become incorrect. Something that is incorrect, bad, because people used to do it, do it, do it, over and over, it's become, people say that this is right, this is the right thing to do, but actually not. So that's also that job, part of the that job. Now after that, I'm going to continue a little bit, you know, after that what happened? After the first blow, that everybody will die, every creation will die, including all the angels, all the angels. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are four angels that will die the last, which is angel Gabriel, Michael, Michael, eh? Israfil, of course, because he's doing that <laughs> trumpeting, and the Israel. Israel is the angel of death, Malakul Maut. But they, the four of them will also will die. The last one will be the angel of death, because he actually have to take the soul, okay, what we call it, the soul of the angel Gabriel, Michael, and Israel. <coughs> and finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually will ask himself, you know, the <coughs> angel, the angel of death to take his own soul. And then when he took his own soul, he, he feel that agony of when the soul is actually out from the body. So he, he feel it actually. So far he just take the soul of people. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I thank you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him feel how is actually the agony of when the soul is departing from the, the body. And then a glam. Kuluman alayha fun. Everything will be so silent. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how long. And then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the angel Israfil to uh, rise and he ordered him to blow the second trumpet. So it's going to be the two trumpets that will he blows. Okay? The first one will make all the people, all the creatures and creation will all die. And then the second blowing will resurrect all the creation that pass away, including human. So that's the second blowing. That's gonna be the first um, era of the hereafter, which is what we call the resurrection. 
So we believe there will be resurrection day, and that when the angel of Israel will blow the second trumpet, and then after it's resurrected, people will be placed in the place called the Al Mashal. Mashal means gathering place, and it's placed for long time. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say one day in the Mashal is the same as fifty thousand years of the time of in this dunya. And people they wait for a long time until they are so you know upset and etc. They actually came to Prophet Adam because they believe Adam is the father of all the human. He came. They came to Prophet Adam and asking, "Oh Adam, please ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to finish this waiting down the martial time." And Adam said, "No, I cannot do that. It's not my job. I cannot do it." And then. They go to Prophet Noah. They went. To, they will go to Prophet uh, Abraham, to Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, and finally, all will say no. They cannot do that, and they come to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, "Yeah, this is my job. I will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to finish this waiting time, the mashal time. And this is what we call the shafaat, which is the intercession. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be given." The highest intercession is called the the uh, Uzma, okay. Uh, and this is actually will have all people eh, from the Masha. Then the Masha will end. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala actually will come with the angels, and then the angels start to give its people his book. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned that. Eh? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned that if you get Uh, the book, apa amaman utia kita bahu biyamini. If you get your book from the right side, you will be happy. They will be happy. But there are some people that will get the book from the back or from the left, and they know what will be happening to them. Okay. So after the book, you know, the first one is the resurrection, and then mashar, and then the book, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will judge everybody. So it's going to be judgment day. After they have the kitab, and this judgment that is very uh, adil, very just, yeah? and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will give everybody the time to what we call do the kishash. Anybody know what the kishash mean? So if you did something bad to people one time, and these people will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for justice. Okay, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will give the time. For that people or for him to ask justice from this world, even just this is just for us. Remember for this one, even between husband and wife, father and son, kids, they will asking justice. Yeah, if we did something wrong to them in this dunya, he will ask them because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give the time for them. To do kishash, that just be careful when you you know when you deal with your kids, with your uh, wife or with your husband, uh, something that maybe right now he didn't do anything or she didn't do anything, but one time in the hereafter she or he will do it, will ask that justice. Okay, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala say even that time the husband and wife maybe become enemy. The father and kid become enemy. That's on the judgment day. And again, everybody responsible for their own action. And even Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will make our own body as a witness. Eh? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said in Surah Yasin that our mouth, eh, one time will be lock, and the one that will tell us what we did in this dunya is actually our hand, our. Our light, our food, our eyes, our skin—they all will tell what we have done in this. That's so just. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also will open that kitab. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala say, "Read your book, your book on action." How long is gonna be? See, because everybody will get the fair chance. It's gonna be a long time also. So in the hereafter, actually, time is really long. Right? So. Be careful with our time in this dunya. We only seventy years, seventy maybe years right, in this dunya. But if we do not careful in the hereafter, for a long time we will be 
miserable. But if we do good things in the dunia, yeah, during our life, we'll be there, we'll be good forever, inshallah. So that's, you know, that's the, the judgment day. And after the judgment day, you know, Allah even give the, you know, the time for people, like for example, if you uh, hit people over there, you know, they will hit you back and they also, they say, no, I, I, I want, I want his hasana. So in, in the hereafter, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the reward or punishment in the judgment day is in the form of hasana. So hasana is kind of, what's it called, maybe money, right? So if you have good deed, then you get a lot of hasana. And then the other one is sayi'ah. Sayi'ah means opposite of sayana, bad, bad deeds. So the currency that will be used in the hereafter will be hasana and sayi'ah. Now after judgment day, everybody will have that hasana or sayi'ah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us in the, what we call the mizan. The mizan is the balance weight. So our hasan scale, okay, scale, yeah, scale. So our hasana and our, you know, sayi'ah will be put on the scale. If our hasana is small, eh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us, okay, you, 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 you good. But if our sayi'ah is actually more, then again, we'll be in the bad condition. Eh. And then after that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad SAW said, will put that people go to the, what we call the lake of Prophet Muhammad SAW, it's called the Al-Kawthar, and then the believer that uh, drink on the Al-Kawthar, then will not be thirsty forever. That's the, you know, the, the Al-Kawthar, the, 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 the lake of Prophet Muhammad SAW. And then after that, you know, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in that hadith, uh, Prophet Muhammad SAW said that, the, the Al-Kafir, the one that do not believe in Allah, that reject the, the truth, reject the, uh, the Kitab, you know, reject, you know, they, they, they Kafir, what you call it, uh, general, in general, Kafir, Kafir, Kafir mean reject, hmm? reject uh, the, the truth. Eh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them into the hell of fire through the, through the gates. There are seven gates essentially, the fire. There are all, subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them on the hell through that gate. The rest, the believers, the believers, yeah? The believers, remember there are some people that maybe have more sayi'ah or maybe more hasana. All of them, all the believers will go past the bridge. It's called the sirat. Okay? And the hereafter there will be sirat, which is under that sirat, below that bridge there will be hellfire. It's mean that, you know, every believers will actually will see the hellfire. Okay? Now some believers okay, will pass that bridge really fast, really, you know, very fast, like a boom. And then on the other side of the bridge will be paradise. So they will be in paradise. Some of them, you know, kind of crawling on the bridge. Some of them is actually go down to the hellfire. Because the sinner, even though they are believers, they still have to responsible for their action, which is they will get the punishment in the hellfire. And then after that, then people will be in two places, what? Right? Hellfire and paradise. Now in paradise, you know, people in paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the ability to help their family or their friend that may be not in paradise, but they are believers. Okay? So the sinner, Okay, the believer that is sinners in the hellfire, they actually will not be in the hellfire forever. That's our belief in Islam. The believer will not be in hellfire forever. Okay, even though you know they are, will be punished, them, it's going to be temporary. But we don't know. Even it's temporary, you know, hellfire is really really bad. Don't try it. <laughs> okay, it's really bad. Yeah? But it's Prophet Muhammad SAW said that. Man kola la ilaha illallah dakhala jana Whoever says there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Eventually will enter the paradise Then the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give that yeah, After their punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the people in paradise To be able to help their friends or their family That may be in the hellfire. 
Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, if you don't see your friends in the paradise, you know, you can ask me, give the intercessor. So we actually have be uh, give the Shafa, the Shafa. We, you know, this is a special for the people that we know that used to go with us, you know, to go to the Halakha, to go to the mosque, you know, because of maybe something happened to them, doing bad things, they are in the, in the punishment. Then we can call them. Oh Allah, why so and so is not with me in paradise? We used to go to mosque, we used to go to, you know, doing good things. What he is not here? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to call them. And then at the end, okay, so like for example, if you have this, you can actually also get your parents from the punishment. So the Hafiz will, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them. That is what many people know, want their, their, their kid to be Hafiz because it can help them, right? So the, that's some uh, uh, inter, uh, intercession, Shafa'ah. And the last Shafa'ah that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu will give is actually, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take all believers from the punishment. And after that, you know, punishment uh, time, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, I will take, uh, you know, take uh, the believer that have at least the, their, in their heart, the belief, the iman, even though maybe only as big as the barley seed. So barley seed maybe, okay, let's, it's a little bit big, but it's, it's small, right? And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will do that. And then he still said, no, I, I still need more. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, take, you know, the believer that have their belief, iman in their heart, at least maybe as big as the seed of the, uh, like a sawi or bayam, or what, what do you call it? Spinach, spinach, which is really small, very small. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you know, uh, give the uh, permission to do that. And then still, there are still believers there, okay? Because there are still people that have believed maybe less than that. Uh, and then, Prophet Muhammad s.a.w. So still asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how about it. And then I'll say, okay, take people that have the belief, okay? even though it is smaller than the seed of the spinach. And then, yes. And then still some there, uh, still some there. And then Prophet Muhammad SAW asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is how how Prophet Muhammad SAW to love us, the believer. Right? He want every believer to be in the paradise. And he asked again the last time. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala say, Okay, okay, all the believer that have the La Ilaha Illallah in their heart, okay, then they all will be in the paradise. So this is the you know the story, or this is information that we we have from hadith and from Quran about what will happen during the Yawmul Qiyamah and also what will happen in the hereafter. Okay. Uh, and again, Islam is a religion that is really clear and open about you know information, even that information that we don't know yet, we already have the idea that will be happen. Okay? In, you know, uh, in the front of us, we, we don't know yet. But this is the Islam, which is very clear, really clear. And if we follow that logical thing, then it's going to be kind of a, a logic uh, sequence also that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam mentioned. Even we have uh, Feel it some of the signs, for example, from you know the major signs uh, of the uh, kiamah. Even it's not there yet, but we can, we can kind of think that it's going there. It's going there. Okay, whatever people try to do, but we still have to do the peace, right? We still have to action, try to make peace in this world. But again, yeah, it will be the. Predestined, predestined from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be happen like that okay, in the hereafter. Okay, our job is actually try to make peace because this is the one that will be 
rewarding by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Okay, we, do, we don't start the fight, we don't start the battle because it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad, you know, bad deeds for us. We still have to do good deeds in order to be rewarded in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us easy, yeah, make us easy to perform good deeds. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change this good deed into hasana in the hereafter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put all our aspect in the paradise. Amin. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alamin. Amin. Uh, I hope this is uh, enough. And you have, if you have questions or maybe comments, yeah, you are you, you are free to do so. Inshallah. Any question? One sister. Or you can also make a question or comments, you know. Uh, <coughs> after that, we, we inshallah will have time. Christian, I'm not sure what they're doing. 
Uh, maybe not in the sub two subdivision. Then we continue to Jerusalem. Uh, in Jerusalem, uh, everybody live like neighbor. Like all of the three religions, they live side by side. The Muslim, the Jews, and the Christians. Uh, our hotel uh, was within walking distance to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Dome of the Rock. Um, the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex, uh, maybe about 10 minutes walk. And then um, when we enter the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, you know, depending on which gate we take, um, if it's a bigger gate, there will be like eight soldiers with guns. And if it's a smaller gate, there will be like maybe four soldiers with guns. And occasionally, occasionally they will ask us, where are you from? Because I was just trying not to make eye contact with them, just trying to walk with everybody else, you know, it wasn't that many people in and out of the gate, but uh, they saw me at some point, wait, hold, where are you from? I'm from Indonesia, I didn't tell him I'm from America. <laughs> I'm from Indonesia, and then he was like, oh, okay, enjoy. Just, you know, simple and just want to make sure who's who. Uh, and there were two male in our group, but you know, the Indonesian people are short, so <laughs> they did not give them a lot of trouble. They, or they asked, like, maybe the name, you know? They probably don't feel threatened by Indonesian people. <laughs> and then three little boys within our group. So, uh, so inside the complex, uh, we can do our prayers, you know, where we visited the Doom of the Rock, Majid Kibli, and the uh, uh, Masjid Maryam, which is the sanctuary of Maryam, where she receives the uh, Holy Spirit of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and then um, we went to Mount Olives also. Uh, we visited Mount Olives. We passed through Bethlehem as well, uh, but Bethlehem was shut. So the like the gate to Bethlehem was shut. Nobody can get in and out Bethlehem. No food, nothing. So Bethlehem kind of like Gaza, except there is no war in there. Uh, there's just maybe new people settlement. Then you know, if you look at in the news, uh, but no truck, no nothing in and out of Bethlehem. Uh, and also FYI, the the church of uh, where. Uh, Mary, it was buried, is also shot. The pastor had ran away after October 7, so, uh, so uh, the, the church is right now closed. Um, then we went to visit Hebron, which is, we went to the complex of Prophet Abraham's uh, makam, a cemetery, which Prophet Abraham and uh, Sarah, his wife, Prophet Isaac and his wife, uh, Rebecca, in English. Um, and the Makom, which is Makom, not, not exactly Makam or cemetery of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, is also in the same complex. But for the cemetery of Yusuf alayhi salam is, itself, is in a separate, like, within eyesight, uh, a separate place. And only the Jews can go there. And if, when we went into this complex, even though it's for the Muslim can visit this, we have to go through like checkpoints with soldiers, you know, only Israeli so soldier there and and gates and anyway. <laughs> you get the idea, checkpoints. Um, but alhamdulillah we were able to visit, you know, this complex of Prophet Abraham. Uh, cemetery. And then we got out of there. Um, but through this, you know, when you face a Hebron, there were so many um, new um, refugees from Gaza. You know? So there were so many people who was asking for money. You know? So if you visit Jerusalem, save your money for the last. Save, save for your money for when you visit Hebron, which is like only one hour away from Gaza. So that's when you will be able to give your money the most. 
Instead of standing in the superior shelf, because that's where the other travel group take us. <laughs> they took us through the superior shelf first. Okay, anyway, and then, um, so after Hebron, um, okay, so the whole time during the trip, the closest thing that we were able to hear uh, to like the current war is just, it was night time. Uh, we were eating dinner and we just heard like, very loud noise, whether it was a jet or maybe a rudder passing by, we don't know, but that was like just one time. And that we didn't see anything, so only like it was still safe. So Jerusalem is still pretty safe. They do have checkpoints for us, uh, you know, like when they ask us questions occasionally, randomly. Uh, it's still a safe place to face it. Anybody, if you like to, you know, Umrah, please. Don't get to visit Masjid Al-Aqsa and hopefully we'll be given barakah in the Ahir Zaman, insha'Allah. Amen. Amen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I think that's a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the you know, ability, the time to do that. This is not that many people is able to do so. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned there are three places that you know you have to go even though you have to be you know in a very difficult uh, condition to reach that three places so what is the first one is going to be the masjid al-haram the second one is the masjid al-nabawi in madina and the last one is masjid al-aqsa in jerusalem that's the three places that recommended by prophet muhammad to visit if we perform the ibadah the prayer on this place it will have more reward compared to the other places in this in this dunya. So that's the three places. So we can have time and do <coughs> that visit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to go there, do it. And inshallah now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a lot of reward. And also this is the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi permission to change the Qibla. Remember Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa always won the Qibla to be facing the the Makkah, the Kaaba, uh, because that's you know that's the, the the place where his which is our you know father prophet Ibrahim doing you know uh, good action over there, okay? doing the manasiks, building the Kaaba. But you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala at the first time when he sent uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallam as a prophet, you know when he Pray is facing the Masjid Al Aqsa, the Jerusalem. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi still uh, stay in uh, Makkah for 13 years, it's easy for him, you know, to pray into Jerusalem, facing Jerusalem, and Kaabah at the same time. You know what? Because Makkah is located in the south. So Makkah in the south, okay, and then the Jerus Jerusalem is in north, right? And in Syria, north. So when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu prayer, it has to face the Jerusalem, right? But he actually, when he pray, he is on behind the Kaaba, okay. So this is him and the Kaaba and then Jerusalem, get it? Yeah. So he can face that easily. But when he migrated to Marina, Marina is in the north. Okay? This is north of Makkah. He cannot do that because Kaaba is on the south, Jerusalem or Masjid al Aqsa in the north. How he can, how he, he can do it? Okay? That's the reason why he asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change the Qibla into Makkah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally give him permission in Asad time. In a short time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed your Qibla now to Kaaba. And at that time, there are some people that doing prayer in one masjid, facing to Jerusalem, which is to the north. And then when they get that information that Qibla has been changed into Makkah, which is in the south to Kaaba, what happened? They changed their prayer from north 
and then going 180 degrees to the south. That's the reason why there is one masjid in Madinah. It's called the Masjid Qibla Thai. Because at that time, people pass, uh, doing prayer to two directions. First, going to Jerusalem, and then when they get the order to face Kaaba, they just turn it back 180 degrees to the Kaaba. So we have Masjid Qibla Thai. If you visit Madinah, you can also visit that. Uh, that masjid Qibla they have two Qibla they have two opposite Qibla because of this and, and again this is blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our Qibla is now in Makkah not in Aqsa you can imagine if the Qibla in the Aqsa is a even though now uh, what would you say is a kind of peace <laughs> but we never know <laughs> because that place is under pressure uh, under pressure still in the Conflict area and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just give us the blessing that our Kaaba, our Qibla in the Kaaba. We can perform Hajj to the, you know, uh, Kaaba to Makkah with easy and peaceful. Okay, so the Zakhla Khair Makhuri for the story. Inshallah, Allah give us the time and ability to also be able to visit that uh, Masjid al Aqsa. As the third holy place for Muslim. Anybody else? Maybe question or comment, or maybe is too uh, hungry to ask. <laughs> uh, salat dulu. Closing <laughs> dia. I will follow whatever the host say. Yeah, so sometimes it is better, you know, when. Inshallah, we can do prayer first. Okay. Yeah. So, di sini ya solat. Iya, insyaallah. Kiblatnya di sana. Okay. Insya Allah uh, raknya bersih baru. Insya Allah, yes. Jadi kita salat maybe two group, eh? and then the first group that already finish salat can start have lunch. Is that okay, brother? Yeah, that's great. That's okay. Insya Allah. Insya Allah.